Megan Pody to join me on the show today. Megan is a certified nursing assistant at Sylacauga Health and Rehab. She's an active member of the First Baptist Church where she also works the welcome desk part-time. She's on the board of directors for the Sylacauga Beautification Council. And of course, the main reason that I have her here is she's one of our biggest supporters on Saturdays for dog walking at the Sylacauga Animal Shelter. So Megan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So uh, you've been walking dogs out at the shelter for months now, and I know you've fallen in love with so many of those dogs. But before we get into specifics about the dogs, let's talk about the whole process, because we meet every Saturday. We're there from 11 to 1 walking dogs. And let's give people a run through so they know what to do when they get there at the shelter. Okay, so first you have to be 18 or older to walk a dog. You can bring a kid with you, but they can't be in control of a dog. Um, you sign in when you get there. There'll be a designated person going back to the kennels to pull dogs out for you to walk. So you'll just wait by the door and somebody will bring you a dog after you sign in and you take your dog on a walk. There's a dirt road with train tracks and a little stream. Mm -hmm. You can go down when it's hot. Some of the dogs really like to play in the water. And there's a picture of you with one of the puppies <laughs> we had out there. Yeah. So I like that picture because that's just pure joy on your face. And well, yeah. That, that's one of the puppies that actually um, recently left for a rescue out of state. So, mm -hmm. you know, that puppy's got a good chance of being adopted. We might have some other pictures. Megan has, has her favorite. Oh, there's Goose. Goose <laughs> my favorite. I asked Megan to send me pictures of dog walking because she does such a good job taking pictures and also um, advertising these dogs and, and letting people know that they're there on Facebook. And of course, she sent me three pictures of her and Goose because that's her favorite dog. That's my boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, now, Goose, uh, I got to meet Goose before he ever made it to the shelter. He was a stray downtown and he showed up at our office and sat at our back door and wouldn't let patients come through so I went out and met him he's the sweetest dog and one of my patients helped me walk him over to the fire department he was just very sweet just followed us right over to the fire department he's we didn't a have sweetheart. yeah we didn't have an animal control officer so the fire department helped us and got him with the police I think he got his own ride in a police car over to the shelter that day but <laughs> he's been at the shelter and he's available for adoption he is just the sweetest dog he and, is he's the not, best hugger not only Megan has fallen in love with him <laughs> and this is uh, we the black dog that just popped up there that was Sam that's actually my dad's favorite dog there he came out and walked and Sam just um, won him over so we got so many let's talk about these dogs because we got so many dogs at the shelter we just showed yeah. pictures of two that are still there but yeah we have the shelter is full, so we full are full. we are in a, a basically a crisis mode at the shelter right there now. There are roommates where mm -hmm. there should not be roommates. Yeah, so there are lots of dogs there, and they're they're all adolescent to adult dogs, so they're harder to find homes for. But you know, Megan, what is your experience with these dogs as we take them out and walk them? They just they just love the love. They they just really appreciate the time to learn on a leash mm -hmm. and to interact with people that are not just the ones they see every day and um, they they really want to give you their heart immediately and, and most people and I've said this many times when I've talked to dog walkers there are a lot of people that assume that if a dog is at the shelter it's there because it's it's a bad dog, so to speak, or it's a dog that's got some sort of problem or you know, why wouldn't someone keep that dog? But as you were just saying, and as we've seen so many times, we just don't see that with these dogs. They, they're, they're at the shelter. It's not their fault that they're at that shelter. And you know, I know I watch Megan pull those dogs out. You're so comfortable with them and do such a great job with them and fall in love with every one of them, and not just Goose. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's just, it is amazing to watch their interaction with people because in spite of whatever situation they came from, whether someone dropped them off at the shelter or if they were a stray picked up on the street, they love people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They, most of them, do really well on the leash. There's some that you can tell need some training, mm -hmm. but even in the few months I've been there, those that were very difficult for me to walk at the beginning now basically stay at heel. They, and they just, get used to it. Yeah, and they, they just are so quick to learn, and you can't just assume that because they haven't had training and they're this old, 
they can't learn. You can teach an old dog new tricks. Absolutely. And another thing to really think about with these dogs at the shelter is if you do decide you want to adopt a dog and you go out and meet them, give them a chance to to come out and, and get that burst of energy out of them. Because yeah. when you first bring those dogs out of those kennels, they've got a burst, burst of energy. Yeah. They've been in those kennels. And the shelter's doing a great job getting the dogs out during the week. So they are getting out more. And we're mm -hmm. seeing on Saturday that because they're getting out more, they're not as nuts when they first come out and yeah, have that big yeah, burst yeah. of energy. But you, you can get to know a dog after you've had it out for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's some really goofy personalities and there's some that are just, you know, like, elegant there's ones that are just just poised and ready to please you and okay. there's ones that just have to jump around for a minute and then they just want the biggest hugs yeah we were joking about that last saturday because they um, we have the big pool with water in it with yeah. these days, really hot days so the dogs can come out and some of them will dive in that pool and you, know, you had a great picture that we didn't show of one dog yeah that, um, that she was blowing bubbles she she laid right on in it and just stuck her whole face in there blowing bubbles and then come up shaking just over and over and over. It was and, the cutest. And then like Megan was saying, we have some dogs that will just dive in in, in the pool and act like nuts. And then we have some dogs that walk up and they're entirely too dignified to yeah. step into that pool. They'll yeah. drink a little bit of water when they look at us like, what? Yeah, maybe so, like paw at it, mm -hmm. pretend that they're too cool yeah. to jump in. <laughs> and the good thing about having volunteers like you to come out to the shelter is that you and you're already showing that that you can give a lot of information about those dogs yeah when we're trying to find people to adopt the dogs or rescues which unfortunately most of the rescues that we work with in other states right now are not taking dogs i think everybody's a bit full right at the moment so um so and we always have a hard time sending adult dogs to other states it's mainly puppies that we can get out of this area but the more information we have, so the more volunteers we have like Megan, the more information we can get about each dog. And then when we have potential adopters, or if we do have a rescue that takes a dog, then um, people like Megan can tell them exactly how that dog acts. And right. we've gotten them out enough. So that's what, I mean, it's not only that the dogs get out and it's so great to have these volunteers and to give those dogs that enrichment, but then we have so much information to give to potential right, adopters. Right, because sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to go adopt a dog, I want a dog, but they don't consider what that dog has been through, mm -hmm. what that dog's personality might be, and how it might clash with their household, mm -hmm. and then we end up getting that dog back and, and that's when we another thought it thing. had it forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's certainly something to keep in mind if you are going to adopt a dog. Ask questions. Contact the feral dogs of Avondale Mill. We can find those volunteers. Contact the shelter, because now that they're taking the dogs out so much, they also know a lot mm -hmm. about these dogs and their interaction with them because they're in with them day in, day out. So you have a lot of different avenues to get that information. Right. And it, it takes time. So when you adopt a dog, the dog is not going to walk into your household and be a perfect pet. No, there's an adjustment mm -hmm. period. You can't, I mean, I wouldn't move into your house and everything just feel like home all of a sudden. I know. And a lot of these adopters have their own pets and so you've yeah. got to really work on that interaction. Yeah. With and give it time because it it takes time to for an animal to settle. Um, I'll find the little graphic and show it at some point on the show, but they have they have it calculated out how many days or weeks it takes mm -hmm. for a dog to get really comfortable in a situation yeah. before you can really see his personality. I've seen, I've seen that before too yeah. and I think the general gist is give it a month mm -hmm. and and that will that will give you a lot of information because it takes time and work to have a dog yeah and it's it's something to think about before you adopt because yeah. um, these, these dogs and cats are part of the family once you bring them into your household they should be mm -hmm. now speaking of cats the shelter's full of cats too yeah so I know I, I catch you in there a lot of times here are two cats that are not at the shelter right now they're at pet sense this is Olive and Nix. They're both about four months old, and Olive's a female, Nix is a male, and they have been at a foster situation, and they are real playful, just sweet cats. So if you are in the market for a cat instead of a dog, then certainly uh, you can stop by Pet Sense or the shelter any day. And we've got, um, got um, cats in both places. So Megan, tell us the state of the cat room at the shelter right now. Oh goodness, the cat room is overloaded there are kittens there are adults there's a mommy and her babies um there's just there's so many cats yeah. all different color cats all different personalities 
uh, again, there are plenty of options out yeah. there. And we've got, um, I believe it's almost 80 kittens in the foster system through feral dogs of Avondale Mill. Mm -hmm. So you've got, uh, we talked about this last week, you've got a unique opportunity where you can either adopt a cat from foster where you've got more information about it or you've got plenty of options of, of young kittens mm -hmm. at the shelter as soon as they're adoptable then you can get a, a young kitten and mm -hmm. um, make it your own basically yeah um, Megan has she's been helping us we have three foster kittens at our house we're trying to um, make sure we socialize so that they'll be uh, good cats available for adoption so um, I've never seen anybody that's as happy as Megan with with dogs and cats and so <laughs> they're just we the are, best. <laughs> we're lucky to have you as a volunteer <laughs> with um, with the shelter and feral dogs of Avondale Mill now, before we go, speaking of volunteering, you're, like I said, on the board of directors for the Silicaga Beautification Council. Yep. So we've got lots of things going on there as mm -hmm. well. Yep. And uh, we appreciate your help with that too. So let's talk about what kind of things we're trying to do. We're, we're getting the, the downtown er area ready for the historic pilgrimage that Silicaga is having October 27th and 28th. We're gonna have a lot of different activities downtown. Um, there'll be a luncheon at Purcell Farms. We've got speakers at the library. We've got tours of some historical places downtown. So let's talk about the historic Sil Silicaga Cemetery. It's oh, it's so cool there. Um, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that needs doing, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of potential. Absolutely. And so we've got some really cool iron gates around some graves that um, one of our members had, has, does metal work. He actually was able to take one home and repair it. Um, and we've got a lot of pruning done already, Absolutely. a lot more to do, a lot of cleanup, um, a lot of litter pickup. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in um, helping with, uh, with the, the Beautification Council, just watch for announcements on Facebook. I mean, we've discussed, we have a monthly litter cleanup, mm -hmm. so that's something that will have a date and a time and you'll know in advance, but we've got so much that we're trying to do, just working on the gardens downtown, working on the, the cemetery, like Megan was saying, and so we'll have some pop-up dates and times that if, yeah. you, if you see a time and you wanna get out and help, then that, that cemetery is a very, um, it's the last remaining part of original Silicaga. And so it's um, an interesting place to go. We have a lot of the, the original merchants and landowners and quarry owners and mm -hmm. lots of beautiful examples of stone carving there at that cemetery. Yeah, and yeah. we're just trying to clean it up and make it look beautiful so that during the pilgrimage we can have some tours there. But we just appreciate all of your help, Megan. You've, you've just jumped right in and I know you're not originally from here and I always claim people once I get them on the show, but you've done so much for the community and stepped right in like Silicaga has always been your home. And Well, I we, mean, if you're gonna live somewhere, you want to take pride in that place. So, absolutely. how can you take pride in something that you're not a part of helping? And you've jumped right in and done that, and we've appreciated you so much with all of your hard work. And I know the dogs and cats appreciate you quite a I bit. I appreciate them more. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, with that said, come on out and walk dogs on Saturday from 11 to 1 and you not only make them happy, but you can also make yourself happy because you saw that picture of Megan with that look on her face. Everybody seems to have that look on their face with just the look of pure happiness when they're of walking the dogs. And if dogs and cats aren't your thing, then um, certainly uh, check out Silicaga Beautification Council on Facebook because we've got a lot of cleanup to do and we'd love all the help we can get with both organizations. And we'll have more Daybreak after these messages. Thanks for joining us.